I've been busy making a bunch of different cables of varying lengths here for my battery bank and now it's time to make the battery cart. So I have I think a plan for that. Let's uh, try building it and see how it turns out. Here are the batteries that are going to comprise my battery bank. I have seven of those orange batteries that were salvaged from a recycler and reconditioned and these two over here I had purchased with the original intent of buying a few more of them and making into this battery bank. Uh, I got these, so I don't need any more of those batteries. And normally it's not a good idea to mix battery types, but in this case I'm going to mix these for a total of nine batteries. And there's reasons why I'm choosing to do that that I'm not going to cover here. But these are the batteries, and I made some cables to connect them all up together. This is two gauge uh, welding style cable. So it's not as heavy as would be ideal, but for all of these batteries, I spent about $150 total. And I don't want to spend a whole lot on cables. All of this stuff, just for these simple little cables here to hook all of this stuff up, is going to cost me another 80 bucks or so. So it's fairly expensive. I prefer to use some zero gauge cable. That would be more appropriate, but I'm just going to use two gauge cable. It should be good enough for this application. I wanted a safe place to store this battery bank that I was going to wire up, so I made this wooden battery box, which I'll disassemble and show you a little bit closer here. It's on wheels, so I can roll it around, and it, I just used some materials that I had in my basement, some 2x4s, plywood and such. I've been working on my basement a little bit here. And this was essentially free material, so here's my battery box. I'll put the camera on the tripod and show you how this thing works. First of all, I didn't want this to be just a battery box, I wanted it to be somewhat useful. So I made it with a top. These come off. I just have some cleats on the bottom so that I can uh, put them in here and they center are pretty solid. So the top comes off and I cut it in half so that on this half I could mount some inverters or whatever I wanted to associate with this box, an inverter and a charger or something like that. And this side I could use as just a standard bench or something. Set things on in the garage, whatever. So this is the actual battery box. And I put it on some casters that I had shown in an earlier video. These are rated for 260 pounds a piece, I think, something like that. It's a piece of plywood on the bottom with a couple of 2x4s on each side to give it strength because this will weigh seven, eight hundred pounds by the time I'm done with it and have it filled with batteries. And this is what it looks like inside. It's just a pretty simple box. Of course everything takes longer than you expect when you go to put it together, but I think that this will work pretty well for housing my batteries. The main problem is I assembled this in my basement and now I need to haul it up the steps and into the garage. Shouldn't be too much of a problem, but it does get a lot heavier than you expect. This thing by itself probably weighs 60 pounds or something already. Well, I managed to lug it into my garage, and now it's time to assemble my battery bank slash rolling workbench. Well, it doesn't roll easily, but I guess I can't uh, really expect anything different from something that weighs half as much as a car. So, I uh, now need to put some 
cables on it. Well, despite first impressions, it actually rolls pretty easily. My garage floor is slightly tilted down toward the garage door, and this cart doesn't want to stay in place. If I want to roll it up here, it keeps wanting to roll back. So, it does roll pretty easily. Uh, the casters don't swivel all that easily because that's the nature of casters, but otherwise the wheels seem to work pretty well. There it is, all hooked up. I have seven of these high quality batteries and two of these cheaper ones. But that's a total of nine batteries and about 1,000 amp hours. So now I need to connect up my inverter. These are all connected up with two gauge cables, all in parallel. And these are dual four gauge. So that makes them one gauge. And I'm going to connect my inverter to this end battery over here. It might be better electrically to connect it somewhere in the middle of this bank, but for mechanical reasons, this is what's going to work out best for me. If this was just a bunch of batteries, it'd be pretty useless. So I'm going to put this inverter on it and store it this way. That way it's pretty much ready to go. And all I have to do is turn the inverter on when I want to use my battery bank. And this is the one that I'm going to use. It's a Samlex 3000 watt inverter, SA3000K-112. I've done a lot of reviews on inverters, disassemblies, repairs, etc. And I like this one. So this is the inverter that I'm going to put on this battery bank. Now in terms of where I'm going to hook it up, I think I'm going to put it on this second battery back here. And that will free up these terminals on this battery for connecting up uh, chargers and such uh, easily. Also, these terminals become a lot more available for my generator that I have over here that I built and made a video about. That way I can very easily hook that thing up to recharge it if I need to in an extended power outage. And there is the completed battery bank and inverter assembly. I, you can see that it's pretty well enclosed except for the ends for ventilation. That keeps the cabling and such safe. I can use this portion of it here as a workbench and uh, I can remove the top to inspect the batteries and whatnot when I need to. And this here is a 3000 watt high efficiency high surge inverter on a 1000 hour amp hour battery bank. So let's try this thing out and see how it works. A couple quick notes first. I have this one amp battery maintainer that I can just clip onto the battery and leave it plugged in. That will keep my batteries nice and maintained when I'm not using them. And I have these terminals here so I can use it for jump starting or whatnot. I also have a 45 amp battery charger that I'll probably connect up to here when the bank battery bank gets drained down and I want to recharge it quick. Uh, well, it'll still take all day since it's a thousand amp hours. And I also can hook up my generator assembly here that I built up to these two terminals here. They're nice and accessible through the end and hopefully this will work out pretty well. So enough talking, let's try it out and see how it works. Those of you who watch my videos know that I like to use electric heaters as a test load for inverters. So that's what we're going to do. I just have a 1500 watt standard ceramic element electric heater and I have that plugged into my kilowatt hour meter over here. And I have a voltmeter that I'm just going to use to measure battery voltages while I'm at it. So let's turn the inverter on and see how this setup works. We have 115 volts out. And I'll turn the heater on. Well, let's first check our battery voltage, see where we're starting at. Batteries are nice and charged. They're just about 13 volts for the whole bank. And I'll turn the heater on. Still outputting around 115 volts. And we're drawing about 1300 watts because the voltage is lower. Another reason to use a heater is because it's cold in the garage, it's winter time, so. Ah. Anyway, let's see what the battery voltage is doing. At the battery itself, it is 12.37. At the inverter terminals, it is 12.22. That's because I'm using 2 gauge wire. It's not really heavy enough for a 3000 watt inverter, but I'm going to use it for now. Let's remove the other half of my battery bank cover here and uh, 
inspect, inspect the other batteries. So I have my voltmeter, and you probably can't read it, so I'll read it to you. But uh, let's try this end battery. So it has to go through a lot of cabling to get all the way over to the inverter, and that's not ideal. So let's see what this battery is at. 12.33. All right, now I'm going to go to the last battery that the inverter is connected to, and we'll see how much voltage drop we get in the whole run of cabling. Twelve point one six. So that's a fair amount of drop. That's why I should be using something heavier than two gauge cabling, but that's what I have for cost reasons. And it should work out pretty well. If I shut off my load and measure the voltage again, we're back up to uh, 12 and a half and rising. So these batteries work out pretty well, but this is just a 1500 watt heater. Let's try something a little bit more demanding. Here's a real test. Here is a 13 amp reciprocating style air compressor. A lot of 3000 watt inverters won't power this all by itself, but I'm going to take it one step further. I'm also going to turn this heater on high, this 1500 watt electric heater. So that is on high, and I'm now going to plug my air compressor into the inverter while the heater's running and see if it can start it. No problem at all. And it runs perfectly. It is drawing 230 amps from the battery bank. You can see that the voltage hardly sagged at all with the air compressor running or not running. So this inverter handles heavy loads with high surges, high inductive loads very, very well. I still have this heater running here pulling 100-150 amps from the battery bank. And for the next uh, 10 minutes or so, I'm just going to let it run and check all of my connections and make sure that nothing's getting excessively hot. And uh, I'll report back to you on how well this battery bank seems to be working. So far, so good. Nothing's getting all that warm. I'm just going to show you a quick little trick here to see how well balanced your batteries are. I have my inverter terminals here. Put my clamp meter around that. You can see that it's drawing 128 amps, somewhere in there. And uh, I can't access all of the batteries perfectly, but you can basically see how much current it's drawing out of each battery. This battery at the end is on its own wires, and I can't really fit the clamp around those, so I'll ignore that battery. So let's go over to this side of it. This battery is all by itself on this one negative terminal, so I can see how much current's being drawn out of battery number seven. Clamp that around there, and you can see it's about 15 amps out of that end battery. Now, this cable carries the current from the end battery plus this one. So this one should have 30 amps if it's evenly balanced, 15 amps from each. And 26 amps. So not perfectly balanced, but not bad. I know that uh, battery, one of these batteries isn't as good as the rest, so that's part of the reason. If we go three batteries in, now we're up to about 45 amps. That's an average of about 15 amps per battery. Uh, I can't clamp around this cable very well, so we'll move on to the next one. We're pulling 30 amps out of the two batteries on this side of the bank. And if I go to this cable, we can see how much is being pulled out of this last battery. 14 amps. So these are all sharing fairly evenly in terms of current, which is a good sign. And of course, if you add them all up, you'll get this, 128 amps. But I'm going to shut the camera off, and it's been running long enough I should be able to tell if any connections are particularly weak in terms of how warm they are. So I'm going to check that quick. 
This setup's been running for 15 minutes or so, and I'm happy to say that I can't really feel any heat at all on any of the connections or crimps except for the cables running to the inverter that are handling over 100 amps. These are, are warm, but uh, not really uncomfortably so, just warm, and the rest are all cold. So I'm just going to put my cover back on this side and store this thing for now. There's my 1000 amp hour battery bank plus inverter. One thing worth mentioning is to never ever store batteries, even partially discharged for any length of time. I have my 45 amp charger here, and because I left the terminals easily exposed, I can just clamp it right up, plug it in, and charge the batteries. I did replace, finally, the cabling on my charger, so this can now handle 45 amps. But I'll let that charge up and then store this thing.